In this video, we provide the solution to question number eight for practice exam number two for Math 1220, uh, in which case we're asked to set up and simplify the integral that'll compute the surface area generated by the surface formed by revolving the arc y equals the square root of one minus x squared from x equals zero to x equals one around the axis y equals one. Okay, so this is a surface area type problem. Let's make sure we have an understanding of what this thing uh, is doing here. So the curve right there, y equals the square root of one minus x squared, we can very quickly visualize that this function is actually the graph of a semicircle um, of radius one, but we're only going from zero to one. So let me actually just put in the portion that we're interested in here. So we get this um, just a quarter of the circle like so. And we're supposed to rotate this around the axis y equals one. So that's going to come right here. And so we're going to take this, uh, this arc and rotate it around the line y equals one. Uh, and so you'll get some type of like funnel like shaped surface there because uh, you'll get like some other part over here. Again, spin that thing around. Uh, and so we're trying to look for the surface area of that region. Um, so it'll be helpful for us to consider what is our typical cross section, something like that. You get a diagonal like so. Um, it is like a trapezoid. We're going to integrate this thing with respect to ds. So then remember, when it comes to the surface area, uh, the basic formula, recall, is a 2 pi times the integral of your radius, the radius of your rotation there, ds, for which with the ds, you do have the option to integrate it with respect to x or y. And so we can choose which one ever seems most advantageous to us. Um, as the bounds are given in terms of the x coordinates, and also the function is a function with input variable x, it seems like integrating with respect to x would probably be the best choice here. But you actually could integrate this with respect to y. You do have that option here. Uh, so let's, let's first consider doing it with respect to x. Now, if you're going to do with respect to x here, you're going to, of course, replace. Well, let's actually deal with this radius here first, because the radius is then this distance right here. How far are you from um, the axis? And so if you take a typical point on the curve here, x comma y, um, this here is y equals 1. This is y. So the distance would be 1 minus y. And so that's important to note here. If we take that radius, since we're, since we're going to integrate with respect to x, we'll go from 0 to 1 here. Our radius is 1 minus y. We'll come back to that one in a second. And then we have to take the square root for the ds here. We take the square root of 1 plus y prime squared dx. So we're going to make some, we're going to have to transition some things over here. Um, we, for example, we need this to be an x, but we have a formula here. That's not so bad. We're just going to substitute that in there. We do need to calculate the derivative of our y function. Uh, that is this one right here. So let's do that to the side right here, y prime. Uh, since it's a square root, uh, when you take the derivative of square root, that actually puts the square root in the denominator. Um, and then you get a coefficient of 2 in there as well. That's just a consequence of the power rule. But then by the chain rule, we have to take the inner derivative, the derivative of 1 minus x squared, which is negative 2x. Uh, the 2s cancel. Um, and then, of course, when you square it, it won't make much of a difference in the negative sign any, it either. So we're going to plug that in right here. Uh, doing so, we end up with, oh, I forgot my 2 pi from before. Uh, so we're going to have 2 pi times the integral here. Uh, so this thing, I'm going to leave this as a 1 minus y for just a little bit longer. Uh, this thing right here, you have 1 plus, then you're going to have to fit your whole square root in there. Uh, excuse me, the, the inside the square root, you have to fit the y prime. We're going to square that. So the numerator, when you square it, is going to become an x squared. The denominator, since it's a, it's a self square root, when you square it, you're going to get um, 1 minus x squared. There is a dx, of course, over here as well. Um, and so then with that in play, let's try to simplify this thing. And the instructions do require we try to simplify this. So for example, inside the square root, I'm going to find a common denominator. So we get 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. Again, I'm leaving it as 1 minus y. This is mostly for spatial purposes at the moment. That 1 is going to become a 1 minus x squared. Uh, we have an x squared in there, and the, the denominator becomes 1 minus x squared like so. For which then, in the numerator, you'll notice these x squareds cancel out, which is kind of nice. The numerator then becomes this, just 1, so you take the square root of 1, which is this 1. So when you rewrite that one more time, 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, um, you're going to have in the denominator the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's nice, dx. Now in the numerator, we have the 1 minus y, so let's, let's consider that for a moment. You get 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared, like so. 
Uh, and so with this one, I notice that because we have the square root of one minus x squared here and here, if I break it up into two fractions, I could simplify it. So, I mean, you could you could insert this into the answer right here. I'd say that's sufficiently simplified, but I'll do one more step here. The surface area is going to be 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1, uh, for which if you take the first fraction, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, uh, the second fraction will just be a negative 1. It just simplifies like that. So if you were to integrate this thing with respect to x, you would get the, uh, the following expression right here. Gives you your answer. Now, if you want to integrate this with respect to y, one thing we have to do is we have to solve this equation for x, for which, honestly, if you go through the algebra, that square both sides, move some things around, uh, you're going to end up with x equals the square root of 1 minus y squared. Kind of nice symmetry of the circle. You get the exact same equation to represent this exact same curve. And notice with regard to the y coordinates, you're going to go from y equals 0 up to y equals 1. And so then when we put that into our integral there, 2 pi, uh, times the integral from 0 to 1 here. Our radius is still going to be 1 minus y, so you get 1 minus y like so. Um, then we have to take the square root of 1 plus um, dx over dy squared, dy. But be aware that because of the exact same formula that we had before, by basically the exact same calculation, if I were to look at dx over dy, uh, dy there, you're going to still end up with a a y this time over the square root of 1 minus y squared. And then when you insert that into the square root, it'll simplify in the exact same manner that we saw before, uh, but now we just have y's instead of x's there. So that's going to simplify to be the square root of 1 minus y squared dy. Um, and honestly, that would then be the answer that you're looking for. You can put that up, put this up here in your box. Put that box on the line or something like that. That would give us the correct antiderivative, uh, so that is to say the correct integral there. And so if you wanted to do that instead using y as opposed to x, you could do that. There's something a little bit nice about it, um, but at the same time, it, the, 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 the hiccup is that this thing was set up for x. You, if you want to do it in terms of y, you'd have to solve for x, which really wasn't too painful in the situation.